So, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Eva, for introducing me to the audience. And I would like first to thank uh, ICOM for this interesting day to let us uh, exchange the knowledge and to see each other. And uh, I have to uh, really thank uh, uh, Madame uh, Anne Follin, the Director General of World Culture Museums in uh, Stockholm, and for all the people who was working hardly to let us really take this opportunity uh, uh, to talk uh, to you about our activities uh, in Iraq. Thanks for Eva, thanks for Maria, and for Shishtin for preparing everything good for us and for the hosp hospitality. We really look, uh, we are at home. Thank you for that. So uh, I would like to talk, I'm working as a focal, national focal point uh, for culture with UNESCO, also for Iraq. So I can talk easily for what happened uh, uh, in North Iraq and West Iraq. But we talked a lot in a different conference ar around the world. Today I would like to talk about the city was really in a weak att international attention and this city was really for a long time under the war, the longest war in Iraq, which is uh, Basra. This is my city. So uh, many people may be here uh, from Iraq and they know uh, where is Basra, but I have to say to make a brief introduction for Basra. Basra is located southern Iraq on the Arabian Gulf, about 560 kilometers south of Baghdad. Uh, uh, Basra was uh, established uh, in uh, 6035 AD by the leader Utba ibn Ghazwan in order to the Caliphate Umar ibn al-Khattab. Before that, Basra was uh, the main port of Mesopotamia uh, 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 in the past. In Basra, we have uh, a huge uh, cultural heritage and uh, historical uh, areas. We have more than 200 archaeological sites, and we have more than uh, uh, 400 heritage buildings. So the history until now, because we have a limited excavation, started from 700 BC till uh, 18th century. So this is just an example for the uh, uh, some of the uh, archaeological cultural heritage buildings in Basra. So I will start when I start my job. I came, I was living in North Iraq with my family. We was escaped from the Saddam's regime. My, my father was suggested to go to the north. And I came back when I finished my uh, university as uh, an archaeologist and a kiniform uh, specialist. I went to Basra and I was looking for the Department of Antiquities with my official uh, agreement to be as employee there. And I spent a week uh, looking for this department and there was no Department of Antiquities because the department building was uh, taken by squatters that are living there. So I went to the home of the director in that time and I got my job. What I saw, I will show you what I saw when I arrived uh, to Basra. Uh, we have different kind of damage happened to the archaeological and heritage buildings. We have direct damage for the building which uh, got a direct bomb, direct damage, uh, during the Iranian-Iraqi war, which is the longest war in Iraq uh, during the 80s, for eight years. And Basra was the core area of this war. Indirect damage, people who escaped from the uh, war area, they are looking for empty houses to protect their families. So they are coming, normally, archaeological heritage building is empty for some work, or for some reason, or to make conservation or something like that. And they are adding uh, really a, a, a new building attaching to the uh, heritage buildings and using uh, different materials which affect the original uh, uh, materials of the uh, building and affecting the architecture shape of the building. Sometimes they are inside doing some damage inside for cutting the room for different part to make enough space for their families also. We have weak awareness. People during the war, the government, they don't have time to do a conservation for the heritage buildings and it will be with the bad condition. So people are afraid maybe it will collapse on their head or, or the family, and they want to protect their families, so they don't have other solution. They just 
remove everything like what you see here. This Shanashil style, a wooden house is very nice, and they just remove it to make it like this. Then, 2006, 2007, Basra passed many wars. Sorry for that, but we passed the Iranian 1991, 2003, the religious problem 2006, 2007, and the people was fighting each other, and there was uh, uh, bombing or shooting uh, them uh, mosques also. So this is one example. It's Al Kawaz uh, Mosque in Basra. It's an archaeology Abbasid uh, mosque. Then the looters will be very active during the war because a weak law, uh, not enough police and army. They are very busy with the war. So the looters became very active for doing illegal excavation or digging uh, for, for looking for finds and artifacts uh, to sell it. Also, the squatters, they are using the archaeological site. For example, this is Isfalt Vactory on the archaeological site, on the first Islamic uh, uh, city outside the Arabian Peninsula, which is old Basra city. It's here. Also taking some soil from the archaeological site to get some profit from it. So what to do? We didn't write any complicated strategy or plan to start do something because we don't have enough resource. We don't have enough capacity and experience in our staff. I was only the archaeologist in Basra in that time. And uh, uh, we just was thinking for what we saw and what kind of solution, quick solution we have to do. We start doing, uh, documenting everything. We start doing a heritage site survey for the uh, uh, heritage buildings. We identified uh, about 150 uh, heritage buildings in the, old, in the city center in the old uh, uh, Basra, like these uh, buildings. And we made a plan for each building. And sometimes we are doing a 3D for some archaeological remains, uh, a foundation. Uh, for the future rehabilitation project. Then we start to do archaeological sites survey, which is the most difficult, really most difficult uh, work to do. We started with the archaeological site uh, inside the, uh, the marshlands. As you know, in so 1991, Saddam was trying to uh, uh, train all the marshlands. And then the new government, after 2003, they want to uh, refill back the, the marshland but we discovered many, hundreds and hundreds of archaeological sites, and uh, we was really afraid uh, to cover it again uh, by water, so we did uh, uh, a survey there. It was too difficult because sometimes we have to walk some kilometers in the water to reach the site. We were uh, uh, preparing our uh, corona satellite image, cadastro map, and old maps to identify uh, on GIS first, the site and then uh, get the coordinates to go to the uh, to reach the site. Here, clearly, you can see I'm very happy sitting beside one of the biggest unexploded bomb in East Basra in oil, Majnun oil field. You know why? Because these bombs, it's not only this. We have thousands of these. Uh, it was our my challenge. It's our challenge. We wasn't challenged with these bombs. Our archaeological site in East Basra was full of unexploded bombs. We cannot do survey, but we did, and I was happy because that was the result. We identified 200 archaeological sites around Basra, and I think we are finished. We don't have any more to do. And uh, uh, then we went to the municipality and to the governorate office to identify this and record what we did on the urban plan, because the government in that time, they was uh, suggested to updating them urban plan and maybe they will extend the city or doing a new buildings affecting the cultural heritage buildings. Then we start doing a conservation for some uh, important heritage building like this uh, house. It's uh, the house of Badr Shakir Asayab. He is the most famous uh, poet in the Arab region. Uh, he is from Basra and uh, we did a conservation uh, and now it became like this. It's a, a cultural center for poetry today. That building was the old museum of Basra. It's a Shanashila style, we called, uh, with a balcony, wooden balcony. 
this building was used as a Greek consulate in the Second World War. And then the Iraqi government got this building to be as a museum for Iraq from 1972 till 1991. 1991, the building was looted, and it has a, a, a huge damage uh, inside. 2003, we lost all the building because the squatters was getting the building to live in. So we did the restoration to make it as a heritage museum because the development of security, we cannot use it as a civilization museum. Then we start talk with the international institution, organizations, museums, and universities. During the survey, as I showed you before, in East Basra, we discovered one of the uh, biggest archaeological sites in Basra, and it was very important and interesting site. And uh, then we talked with the uh, Manchester University uh, to hold a, a geophysics survey in this site using a modern technology on the archaeological field. And they accept and they signed a contract with the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage uh, of Iraq. And we start doing uh, this survey and we discovered the uh, Alexander Lost City uh, in Iraq. What we discovered here, a Hellenistic city plan. It's a very known that the Hellenistic city plan, it's uh, uh, make it like a, a sectors, uh, different parts. But the size of each sector here in this city it's larger and bigger than Alexandria in Egypt and the uh, Seleucia in, on, on Tigris. So here it's measure 85 by 156 meters. It was the main port uh, of, of Iraq and the Meishan uh, kingdom. This is just an, uh, a drone photo for the side. This is the fence, you can see it here. And the city, it's underground in this, uh, inside the, the fence. Then we did some excava archaeological exca excavation in two of the uh, archaeological sites inside the marshlands. We was identified undefi before. Uh, this is the uh, Tel uh, Shuaib, uh, uh, Prophet Shuaib uh, site. Uh, we discovered a Basid uh, period here and some uh, finds like this uh, baked bricks decoration and some pottery. Also another site called the Tizal and Tawila uh, site inside the marshes. It's a modern Babylonian period. This is just a foundation uh, of our uh, excavation and some finds like this. Then we was looking for a center for grouping all of these activities and uh, to protect uh, the remains, let's say, uh, artifacts uh, in this city. So we suggest to uh, uh, establish a new uh, Basra Museum, Civilization Museum for archaeology. During Saddam's time, Saddam was built five palaces in Basra as a complex, one complex uh, of palaces. Uh, after 2003, British Army was using this uh, complex for them operation, uh, main operation office, let's say. And they was uh, using the lakeside palace, which is the museum today, as a kitchen for the army that was eating there and cooking also. So this is the face of the, uh, uh, of the museum on the Shuttle Arab Bank. It's really a strategic place, a very tour tourism place. Um, and we start, we had some terrible uh, bureaucratic problem with the Iraqi government because first time we got agreement from the local government, then the central government, they refused to give us the building. And we wait three years to get this building. So 2010, officially we got the building to transfer it to be as a new museum for Basra. And uh, first uh, collaboration was with the British Army. One of the engineers was doing the plan for us. And then uh, they keep us in touch with the uh, Middle East Department at the British Museum in that time. Uh, Dr. John Curtis, he was the keeper of the Middle East in this museum. And uh, he was working with his friend, Sir Terence Clark, to create a charity, open charity, in UK called the Friends of Basra Museum to pre prepare the funds for the rehabilitation of this museum. This is just a photo for Dr. John Curtis on my right and Claire Babington. On my left, we lost our dear best friend. She was pushing me to do, uh, uh, protect the cultural heritage, and she gave me really a, a passion to, to walk more. And she, we lost her some days before the opening. She was died during she was working for something for the museum in Amman. 
which is Lamia Al Gailani. She's a specialist in cylinder seals. She's very friend of Rashad Salim also. Uh, and also Leanne Pochler, some people uh, that are not in the photo, like uh, John Porter or McLeaver. This is the plan of the museum. We have five main space in this, uh, in this palace. Uh, here we use this space, uh, 400 square meters, as a Basra gallery. We call it Basra gallery. It covers Hellenistic and Islamic uh, period. This one for Babylonian gallery. And this one, Sumer gallery. It's covered prehistory till, Sumeria, uh, till uh, I mean, the end of the uh, modern Sumerian pe period. And here, Assyrian. Here, education room and oriental hall and some uh, staff offices. That, that's the ground floor. The first floor, we have laboratory and library. It's a recent project. We're still working to, co to complete the library at the end of this year. And we have the meeting room and some uh, store there. We start our work for the rehabilitation. As I said, many damage was in the building because the uh, muscles. Uh, we closed all the windows, repaired the dam, doing uh, uh, the network of water, network of electricity, doing the showcases, preparing the artifacts from the storage of the Iraqi museum, doing conservation for the artifacts. It's many things. Uh, we cannot say it within 20 minutes. Then, 2014, all we saw the terrible video shown by the website of Daesh uh, that was uh, destroying uh, the mosque, church, synagogue, mendi, tomb, everything in the north and west uh, Iraq. But that video gave us power to really work hardly to open one of the galleries in the museum to send a message for them that if you destroy the museum north Iraq, we are doing new museums south in Iraq, in Basra. That means civilization will be uh, win forever. I mean, it's for humanity. So we opened uh, the Basra Gallery uh, in 2016. And then a huge, covered by me international media, more than 200 important media around the world, newspaper, magazine, uh, satellite channel, different media was covering this, uh, this project, this opening. Then we, it gave attention for the British Council to fund the other three remains galleries and the uh, French embassy to fund the laboratory. So we, made, we worked with this fund and we made the celebration of the opening just in last uh, March, 19th of March. So we're very new. That's just to give you an idea about the exhibitions there. This is the Sumerian Gallery and that one, the Assyrian that one Babylonian gallery, and I already you saw the uh, Basra gallery. We are focusing on kids now. Uh, we have uh, discussion with the education ministry for sending them schools to the museums. We have uh, a huge number of, of, uh, uh, of kids uh, coming to the museum every day, and also from the secondary school, elementary school, and uh, universities. And we are doing education room for them also, doing some other activities for them. Then we participate with the Ahwar of the southern Iraq, the marshland of southern Iraq, to be on the World Heritage List. I was leading uh, uh, the cultural part of, part of this project because it was a mixed serial nomination file, natural and cultural and, and serial uh, different components. And uh, under the name the Ahwar of Southern Iraq, Refuge of Biodiversity and Relict Landscape of the Mesopotamian Cities. The main argument of this file was the, environment, the climate change and the environment, how the environment is important for the creation of the civilization or the death of the civilization. Some uh, uh, similarity of the tradition life in the marshes during the Assyrian time and, uh, and now. Also, similarity of the technique for making reeds houses. Then, um, I became the head of the nomination file of the Babylon uh, uh, to be on the World Heritage. We hope this year in July it will adopt by UNESCO to be on the World Heritage, which is shame. Babylon, it, until now, it's not on the World Heritage because the development happened by Saddam Hussein during the 80s. So we uh, did a huge work there, many uh, big projects of uh, restoration, and we prepared the nomination file accepted by UNESCO and ECOMOS to now, and we hope everything will be fine on uh, July. All of this work 
without, with this very basic uh, plan and strategy. During the war, after the war, you don't have time to think. You don't have time to think what to do. You don't have to implement. You don't have time to implement your uh, complicated uh, strategy and plan, emergency plan or something like that. You, don't, you cannot imagine what the people will do. People will be with whom during the war, whom to talk with. So you have to create your really uh, uh, quick strategy to protect the cultural heritage. I remember last year, I spent my holiday here in Sweden, in Utebury, in August. And I received a call from Basra. They said, we have a very big demonstration by people. And people was firing all the offices of the government. And around the museum in the complex, it's full of government offices. And the people coming to fire the museum also. Because they don't know. It's a government complex. So what to do? I'm here. <laughs> so in one hour, I did 50 calls quickly for my cousin, my friend, my staff, my uh, volunteers. Uh, anyone can help to be with the demonstration people, to make awareness, to tell them this is for you. This is your museum. This is your cultural heritage. And this is for humanity, for your kids, for your you know, children. It's not uh, for government then they accept. They didn't do any things for the museum. And now it's the most respect building in Basra. So you, have, you don't have to, you know, to really be in a, a complicated strategy to do things. Now we have a, a discussion with the European Union. We got some fund for Basra, about 7 million euros, to do a conservation for the heritage building on the al Ashar River. And also uh, UNDB was, uh, we was working with UNDB for making the study and the design for this project. We just finished from that. During 2006, 2007, let's go back for the religious problem. We was working not as, uh, as a, a, a government staff. We was working as Iraqis, as Basrawis, to protect our history. And we was very close to the NGOs. And we was working hardly with them for making this project we called, it's intangible, let's say, heritage. We called uh, to, uh, um, uh, religious heritage for grouping all people, Christian, Muslim, Sunni, Shia, Mandi, in a one room and talk to them through them cultural heritage. Show them how the life was in peace when they was all together. Show them how the, the, the church was beside the mosque, beside the synagogue, beside the Mandi. Life was very easy and very, uh, very good in peace. So we, I think we win because not, nothing happened strongly in Basra mostly North and Mid-Iraq. Uh, so that was uh, one of our uh, projects uh, in Basra. As one of the Sumerian men, 4,000 years old, say MRG in Sumerian language, in Kiniform writing, that means return to the mother, or freedom and peace. So all of these things for freedom, using the cultural heritage to be in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you.